I have here a data set that I've collected from a drone flight over here in Ireland. So the data set itself was more than 350 photos, but what I'd like to show you here is how we use just a subset of those to stitch them all together into a complete author mosaic. And I'm going to do this today in ArcGIS Pro. So let's jump over there and have a look how it's done. So I open ArcGIS Pro and as you can see, I've already created a project inside there that's going to house my data and do the analysis. I'm going to go up to the imagery tab and over to new workspace and create a new workspace. So it comes up with some questions for me. It's what do I want to call this? So let's just call it Heron Island. And note that I don't use spaces. If I do want to separate words, I can put an underscore in there. And that's just because sometimes ArcGIS can have a few hiccups when you have spaces or special characters in there. So let's just leave those out. Now I'm going to accept the default for type here. It is a drone data set, but I am going to change the base map to be an imagery data set. That just makes it easier when I bring in my own imagery just to see exactly where it is because there's not a lot going on around Heron Island except a lot of ocean and so the topographic map there is a little bland. So let's click on to next and it's going to ask me to import the photos that I would like to author mosaic. So let's hit on add here and I'm going to go to the folder where I've stored this subset of data. So let's add that in now and you can see that it's listed in all the image names. So they're all DJI photos. So they were taken from a Phantom 4 Pro and you can see they're JPEGs. And you, importantly, what you can see is the latitude and longitude information. So this is going to give the software a bit of a head start as to where each of these photos should be placed when it attempts to stitch them together. Interestingly enough, the altitude is absolutely not correct, so it wasn't flying that high. Although I am able to fly up to 120 meters in Australia, for this particular flight I was only flying at about 40 meters. So it's good to keep your own, your own metadata on that as well. So if you scroll down to have a look at some of the other options, it's pulling in that geolocation information from the EXIF, which is a, a metadata header form, and that's basically tagging every single photo with the, the center of where the drone was at that location. Now, once I do that, I'm happy with all those other bits and pieces of information, and I'm just going to click finish. Now, it's going to load those photos into the software and create a basic location for each of them before it starts its processing. All right, so here we go. You can see that it's loaded up the centers of each of those photos and it's going to start to do some basic calculations just to understand where the photos are and where the footprints are based on the information that it has in that header, header data there. And I'm actually pretty happy that it is in that general location, which is a really good thing to start with. So the next thing that we're going to do now that we've checked basically that it's in the general location that is correct, we're going to hit the adjust tool. Now you can go into the different adjustment options, but given that we're just looking at a really basic introduction into this, we're just going to accept the default options for these tools. So once you become a little bit more aware of, of how each of them works and certainly test it on your own data sets, then you can start to play with those individual options and see how that affects your data and the output there as well. So let's just hit adjust and it's gonna take a little while for those images to process through. So you can see that the adjustment has happened successfully and down the bottom of the log here, it took eight and a half minutes for that to occur. So you can imagine that with much, much larger data set and indeed the full data set of which this is just a subset, it's going to take a significantly longer portion of time. Now this is really just working out the model for where the individual photos should be placed. So let's have a look over on the left hand side. You'll see that there's a bunch more things that have popped up in the table of contents over here. So we can click on the solutions points, for example, and you'll see that all these points come in. And this is basically where the model is estimating where things should be and how far away they are from that. So obviously you want to have really low residuals there. Now, the other thing that I like and find really interesting to look at here is the tie points. So this is where the photos are going to be matched together based on 
components of that image where the software recognises that, that they are similar and so they should actually be on top of each other. So let's have a look at this here. So you've seen that the little crosses have popped up on the image there and there's, it's so dense, there's so many of them that it's hard to see individual tie points. Let's have a look at just how many there are that the software creates to be able to model this. So if we were to right click onto this and go to open attribute table, you can see that all of the individual points are located there and I can load them all to see that there's 53,000 points within this data set that are going to be used to stitch the image together. So let's head on back up to the ortho mapping tab up here. I'm going to close off that attribute table. And now really what I'd like to do is the final step here and to create my ortho mosaic. So I'm just going to tick on that one there and you'll see that it's going to guide me through a step-by-step -step process that's going to allow me to create the mosaic. So at the moment we've just created the model that's going to allow it to understand where the images need to be placed. Now you can change some of these some of these different parameters if you like but I recommend the first time you do it just set them as it is so leave the defaults and then come back in later if you'd like to make some adjustments once you see what the final output looks like. So let's click on next here and leave those for the moment. And the only other thing that I do want to change is that I'd like it to go into a TIFF format. So that way I can use it in other image processing systems if that's what I'd like to do. So I'm gonna leave all of that as it is. I'm just going to click finish and allow it to tick through its process. So you can see in the log here that that process has taken an additional three minutes and seven seconds. So not really that long in the whole scheme of things, just enough to go off and make a cup of tea or something. And you can see also that the image has popped up in my screen, you can still see the yellow squares and the track line that shows where the images were collected in the first place. But most importantly is that the mosaic is there. So the first thing I'd like to do is if I right click onto mosaic and go to symbology, I just want to get rid of that black background there. So I'm going to head over here in the symbology interface and go to mask and then just tick display background value of 000 to be transparent. And that's just my personal preference. I don't like seeing all the extra black. And the reason that occurs is because raster data sets must be square or rectangular in nature because they're made up of square pixels. So they have to be that shape. So the data exists as this nice big rectangle, but most of those cells are really holding no data. They're just placeholders there. So I, just, I don't need to see them. So let's have a zoom in and check out what this looks like and you know you can always turn off any of these other things that are sitting on top if you like. So you could turn off the ground control points, the camera locations and the flight path for example and you can really start to see the image here and just how spectacular it is when it's all stitched together like that. You see this amazing resolution and it's covering a really nice area here as well. Now if we want to have a look at how well placed our image is over that background satellite data, we can head over to the appearance tab and use the swipe tool. So this is really going to allow us to move one layer over the top of the other. You can see that my cursor's now changed to this little black triangle and I can use it just like I'm going to open and close a curtain. And you can see that actually this data has been georeferenced really nicely and the feature that I'm looking at is this bund wall which is the set of concrete blocks coming along here that's separating the boating channel from the rest of the reef and you can just see it in the imagery below and it is really sitting over the top of that nicely. So I'm pretty happy with this first attempt at doing the really basic method of stitching together my images in ArcGIS Pro. Now if you're using terrestrial data and you're more interested in also creating the digital elevation model, then you've also got the option to do that across the top here. Now one of the biggest drawbacks I've found with the ArcGIS Pro ortho mapping software here is that you must have geotagged data. So this isn't going to work if your, if your drone isn't tagging those photos, even if they are nicely overlapping. So you can use non-geotagged data in Pix4D or Agisoft, for example. So there might be other options for you if you don't have georeference data. 
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this, this short tutorial. And if you would like to have a trial of some of this data as well, you can get in touch with me at James Cook University. So just shoot me an email and I can make a small subset of some of these data available for you to test for yourself.